Bishop Reed, my brothers and sisters, it's a great joy to celebrate this Mass with you today, the 13th of March, which is the 10th anniversary of the election of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. <coughs> Ten years ago, it was my privilege to participate in the conclave of cardinals that elected Pope Francis shortly after the resignation of Pope Benedict. It was a very moving experience. Uh, we were gathered in the Sistine Chapel where we prayed for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to be able to discern God's will for the church. It was very much like a retreat experience. We knew that millions and millions of Catholics all over the world were praying with us, and that was a great source of strength and consolation for all the cardinals. At the proper moment, each cardinal had to draw near to the altar and holding up one's ballot before Michelangelo's fresco of the Last Judgment, we publicly swore to cast our ballot for the one that we believed God wished to be the Supreme Pontiff of the Catholic Church. That historical conclave gave us the first Pope from the American Hemisphere and the first Jesuit. He's also the first Pope to choose the name Francis. And he made it very clear that although he's a Jesuit, he was choosing the name of St. Francis of Assisi. In many ways, it has helped to define his pontificate. Francis of Assisi was known for his simplicity, his love for Jesus crucified, and his love for the poor. Pope Francis has made all of these things a hallmark in his ministry as Pope. His choice to forego many of the historical trappings of the papacy has captured the imagination of all people. We are also moved when, during one of his public audiences in St. Peter's Square, the Holy Father rushed over and embraced a man by the name of Inicio Rivas, whose face was terribly disfigured by a congenital disease. Afterwards, the man was interviewed by newspaper people, and he said to them that he was used to being treated so poorly by people, and if he sat on a bus, people would move away from him and refuse to talk to him. So when the Holy Father rushed over and embraced him and kissed him, he was, he was so moved to feel the love and the kindness of the Holy Father. It was much like St. Francis embracing the outcast and kissing the leper. Two of Francis's uh, encyclicals are named for phrases used by St. Francis of Assisi, Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti. The first of these encyclicals is named for the opening words of St. Francis's canticle of Brother Son, where he calls upon all of creation to praise our loving Creator. And in the other Franciscan encyclical of Pope Francis, Fratelli Tutti, it finds its inspiration in the visit of St. Francis to the Sultan during the Crusades. In this encyclical, the Holy Father gives us the, a beautiful reflection on Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan and challenges us to be a Samaritan church working to unify the human family and overcome the divisions of hatred, racism, and war. The Gospel from today's Mass is a very important one for us Catholics. It's the moment when Jesus chooses Peter to be the head of the church. Thou art Peter, and upon this church I will build my, chur my church. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. For us Catholics, the role of the Holy Father is crucial. Jesus founded his church with apostolic governance and has given the Holy Father the responsibility of guiding his people. Pope Francis, like St. Peter and all of the popes, are human beings with their strengths and their weaknesses. But our faith assures us that they have a critical role in God's plan for the church. Over the past 10 years, it's been a privilege to work closely with the Holy Father and to observe his deep personal piety and prayer life. He's truly a man of faith. Invariably, after every conversation or in every note that he writes, he always ends asking for prayers. He's acutely aware of how 
challenging and important his ministry is in the life of the church and has no doubt about the urgency of prayer for his ministry. It's for that reason that I want to use this occasion of celebrating Pope Francis' 10th anniversary by asking all the faithful of the Archdiocese to hold our Holy Father each day in prayer. There's never a celebration of the Mass without prayers for the Holy Father and the Bishop. In this way, the liturgy itself is teaching us how important it is to pray for our leaders. Another beautiful aspect of Pope Francis's teaching and ministry has been his emphasis on God's mercy. Pope John Paul II gave us Mercy Sunday and made known St. Faustina's chaplet of divine mercy so well in the world today. But Pope Francis gave us this extraordinary year of mercy, which to my mind was, in, at least in my lifetime, the most effective holy year that we have ever celebrated. In a world where there's so much pain, so many divisions, so much racism and war and hatred and misunderstanding, people are hungry for God's mercy. Pope Francis' holy year of mercy helped us to focus on this very central tenet of our religion. The Holy Father keeps reminding us how we must show mercy to one another. In the homily that he gave on his installation on the Feast of St. Joseph, he talked about St. Joseph as a caregiver and encouraged all of us to learn to care for one another. The Holy Father is always challenging us to be missionary disciples. And right from the beginning of his pontificate, Pope Francis taught us to go to the periphery, to look for the lost sheep, to come to the aid of the man left half dead by the road. Pope Francis' first journey as Pope was to Lampedusa, where he warned the world of the globalization of indifference as he threw a reef into the sea where hundreds of refugees had perished, trying to escape oppression and hunger. The Holy Father is anxious for the church to be a field hospital where the wounded and the suffering can find healing, consolation, and companionship. One of the most compelling scenes from, Saint Fra from Pope Francis's pontificate was three years ago during the pandemic when to an empty St. Peter's Square, the Holy Father blessed the world with a monstrance. On that occasion, the Holy Father reflected on the gospel passage of Jesus asleep in the boat in the tempest. The distraught apostles awakened the Lord and said, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? The Holy Father says that faith begins when we realize our need for salvation, the need that, that we have of the Lord to be our navigator. We must invite Jesus into those parts of our lives and hand over our fears to him so that he can conquer them. Today we thank God for giving his church to us as an instrument of salvation, and we thank him for the ministry of Pope Francis in these past ten years. Let us hold up our Holy Father in prayer so that the Holy Spirit will inspire and guide him in his task as our universal shepherd. May Mary, St. Joseph, St. Ignatius, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Peter and Paul, and all the saints intercede for our church and for our Holy Father, Pope Francis.